in a few minutes. Without a doubt, certainly without a doubt, all praise, thanks, and gratitude belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to our Creator. We're gonna explore that a little bit, just a tad, just a tad. What does that really mean, praise and thanks? What does that really mean? Which is embedded in the word hamd. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعود بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا يضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم الله سيزا نسبك يا أيها الذين آمنوا أو بليفرز أو do you believe? Ittaqullah. How do we say this? Ittaqullah. Have taqwa. Have consciousness. Have awareness of Allah. Develop that within yourself. Develop that within your characteristics. Develop that within your daily routine. Anything that you do that you are constantly, to the best of your ability, are aware of Allah. Aware of your actions, the way Allah deserves it. Under no circumstance, don't you die? Don't you forget this rule? Unless you're in a state, a false state of submission. We said Alhamdulillah. We are saying thank God and we praise Allah, and we show our gratitude. One thing you all need to know, every single one of you. When you came here today, it is not by a chance. When you came here today, you have been invited to come here. You have been invited to come here to participate in this occasion, on this day, on this blessed day. For that you say, Alhamdulillah. For that you say, Allah, thank you. What does that really mean to praise and thank? Thanking is probably easy to understand. All the things that you have in life that you're enjoying, you need to say thank to it. That's what Allah's command is. But what does it really mean to praise? Allah shows it to us in the Quran. I came across one hadith which is not commonly known, not commonly talked about. I uh, talked about one of the hadiths last time here, and once the khutbah was done, one of the brothers came and told me that, what did, where did you come up with that? I never heard of that. So this could be one of those scenarios. It doesn't mean that I'm trying to be disrespectful to you. You may have heard this. Where do you find this? In quite a few books of the hadith, and where I found it today was in the front page of uh, Tafsir ibn Kathir. Tafsir ibn Kathir, if you open it, it's right there, 20 pages of that. Read it, that's your homework. Go look at it, explore. It tells you in detail what the hadith is all about. It's beautiful. That's in English, English too, by the way. It's available for free. You can, you can see it online. So you've been invited here. You say Alhamdulillah for that. Have you heard, let me say it this way. Have you heard or have you told, if you're a young brother and sister or if you are an elderly, have you heard you saying that when you do, whenever you do prayer, it's talking to God? When I ask my kids, what do you think prayer is about? What do you think salah and namaz is? The first thing that I hear is like, it's talking to God, right? Talking to Allah? Yeah, where did you hear that, right? That's the question. That's what this hadith is all about. If you're sitting here and contemplating like, oh God, another khutbah about prayer, I know what I'm doing, that's, that's not what it is. You, I'm not going to unravel something that you haven't heard, you haven't seen, you haven't, you don't know. You know it. It's just a confirmation of what you know. Maybe there's something new in there. So just relax and take something with you. Allah says this. Here's our, I give you first homework. That is to go to Ibn Kathir, flip in the first 20 pages or so, you hear about this in detail. Your second homework. The hadith is Hadith Qudsi. You may have been tired. This is my method. I give khutbas. In khutbas I give homework. If you don't know what Hadith Qudsi is, ask someone who knows what Hadith Qudsi is to explain to you. 
I'm not going to go in detail what the hadith Qudsi is. In hadith Qudsi, this is what Allah says. Prophet says that Allah said, Qasamtu salati, Qasamtu salati bayni wa bayni abdi nisfayn wa li abdi ma sa'al. Allah says this, I have divided the prayer. So pay attention. I have divided the prayer into equal halves. Two halves. Exact. The spine means the exact half, not approximate about ish. No. Exactly half and half. 50%, 50%. Allah says, I have divided the prayer into two equal halves between me and my slave, which is you. Between both of us. That's what Allah's claim is here. And here's how he starts. Allah starts in this hadith. And anything that my slave asks, anything that my slave asks, he's going to get. Already you get the beginning of this is a promise. Anything you ask in the prayer, you will get. Ponder upon this. What does that really mean? What does that mean to you and I? Do you and I know what we are saying in the prayer? From our history, we know any time we came across some sort of difficulty, those who brought this religion to you and I, the first thing they said, they engaged themselves into prayer. That means they asked Allah for what they needed, the difficulty they were facing. It is Allah's promise that you will get what you ask for. First and foremost, you and I need to know what we are saying what we are saying and what we are asking for. And it goes like this. The next part of the hadith is this. When my slave, that, that is you and I, say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I'm not going to translate that. That's part of you that you need to know. When you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, guess what the response is from Allah? The response is, Qala Allah Ta'ala, Hamadani Abdi. Um, it is not difficult. It is, it is quite difficult for me to, to explain through this and then to you all this in time allotted, and also to be able to say it without getting emotional. Here, here's why. You are standing in prayer, and you're talking, and Allah responds when you say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The first ayah you finish. Immediately, Allah's response is, response is Hamadani Abdi. My slave praised me. My slave thanked me. Here, here's, here's what is really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm no different than you. When I'm standing in prayer, there's a million things going in my head. What happened to my project? What am I going to eat for lunch? Did I send an email? Um, what is going to be for dinner? Is my kid happy? Is my spouse happy? Um, am I going to be able to have time to exercise? How am I going to pay the bill? Did I get paid? There's everything run through your head. Everything. At the same time, Allah says, My slave praised me. My slave thanked me. The teacher who uh, I learned this class from, he said it like this. I'm going to give you a quick analogy. He said, remember, you remember when your kid is in the first grade, second grade, comes home with a drawing, with a picture, and says, uh, look, mommy, daddy, I drew you. And it's a uh, big head, stick figures, and all that. It's just like, okay, uh, you drew me. But guess what you do as a parent? You and I find the biggest, the baddest magnet and stick it on a fridge and put it there and proudly represent it to anyone and says, my kid drew me. Which that stick figure is just is kind of meaningless. It makes you laugh. The way our condition of our prayer is, for those of us who are lucky enough to know what we just said, Allah says proudly, my slave praised me. He thanked me proudly to everyone, to all the angelics, to every, everything created. That's Allah's response. Next time you're standing here, don't underestimate what you're doing. 
Don't underestimate what you're saying. Why do you think you have been invited here to talk to your master? Why do you think it is recommended anytime you come to a congregational prayer? You clean yourself as you're talking to your master. If you're, my apology, if you're smelling like chicken salad and bologna, you don't, you don't deserve to be here. You don't want to be here. You don't want to dis- cause discomfort to someone else. The hadith goes on. When you're reciting Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah's response, I'm not going to translate to you Maliki Yawmiddin, that's your homework, to figure out what you just said. Allah's response is, Athna alayya abdi. My slave glorified me. This is how you praise God by these words, by his attributes. By attributes, you praise him. That's when he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamd. When you go on and say the next one, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. When you read that, Allah's response comes immediately. And guess what that is? Majjadani abdi. Majjadani abdi. It's another word for glorification. Allah says again, he, my slave, glorified me. My servant glorified me. Right this at this moment. There's another narration that says, Allah's response says, My servant or my slave put all his affairs in me. He had full trust in me. Allah saying that to you. Now here comes the other part. When you're asking, and also at this moment, Allah says, this is how it becomes so beautiful. Pay attention to this. Allah's words are, this is between my slave and me. When do you say that to someone? When do you say it? When you have created a relationship, when you have built a trust, when you have built respect and love to someone, you say, this is between us. Allah says, between, this is between my slave and I. And, وَلِعَبْدِ مَا سَأَلْ And for my slave is exactly whatever he's asking. He's guaranteeing you that whatever you're asking, you're gonna get. That is the power of this prayer. When you stand in prayer, you ask for what you know what you're asking for, you are going to get it. That is a guarantee from Allah. When you go on in the prayer, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الطَّالِّينَ When you read the, the, the latter part of the prayer, guess what Allah's response is? هَذَا لِعَبْدِي وَلِعَبْدِي مَا سَأَلْ Everything that he just said, you my slave said, this is all for my slave. I will give him whatever he's asking for. Whatever he's asking, I'm going to give him. How many times did Allah say this to you? The beginning of the hadith started with that same phrase, Wali Abdi Masal. In the middle, when you just finished the first part of praising God, he said the same thing. And when you end it, this prayer, he said the same thing. In other words, he's trying to catch your attention. He's saying, pay attention. You will get what you're asking for so long as you have sincerity in you. So long as you mean it. So long as you know what you are saying. There is, there's, as I said in the beginning, there's about 20 pages of this in Ibn Kathir and all the other parts of the hadith that you find this. Hadith of Qudsi, Allah's promise. What does that mean to you and I? That means you and I need to know what you're saying. That means you and I need to value this act of worship. That means we have some homework to do, we have some work to do to understand every word. Every word. Why Allah started with Alhamd? Why Allah? Why did He say Rabb? Why did He say Al What is the sequence between Alhamdulillah and Rabbil Alameen? Why in this sequence, why not and something else? Allah has 99 names I learned in Sunday school. Why did he use Allah and Rabb? Why not something else? These sequences and everything else that you ponder upon, that's what you're gonna get. 
when you heard your parents said, or you're telling your kids, prayer is communication, it is communication with Allah. He is responding, know that, because this hadith confirms it. This hadith by Thirmizi, I think, if I'm not mistaken. You and I have some work to do. Make your prayer as best as you can. In the next 10 seconds, 15 seconds, as I'm going to say, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever you want. The best thing to ask is forgiveness. Allah says in this book again, In Allah, Wabal Ayikatahu is a Duna Alan Nabi. Ya Ayyahul Nadina Amiru, Sallu Alaihi, or Sallu Tasima. Allah, who must Sallu Alan Hamad or Alan Hamad. Kama Sallaita Alan Rahim, Wala Alan Rahim, in the Kahabi. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين امين. Whenever you make your dua, please include at least one nation in your dua. You all, you all must have seen, heard, read the news of the atrocities going on in Syria. And they're in a dire need. They have an absolute dire need, and villages and cities destroyed, 80, 90, 70 percent completely destroyed. People have been displaced, and it, they're in desperate, desperate, desperate uh, shape. Do at least a couple of things. The least you can do, keep on remembering in your heart, keep on remembering, supplicating for Allah, ask for, ask them for better, for better days, and open your hearts, open your wallets, open your arm, hands, open whatever you have to give them, because they are in desperate, desperate shape. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدَ الْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَعْنِ يَعْنُوا لَهُمْ لَكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَ